Hello everyone, it's Josh from EBC Breaks here and today we are going to be answering some more of your most commonly asked questions. What is the anti-lock braking system? The anti-lock braking system or ABS works to prevent wheels from locking up. Wheel sensors detect a possible lockup and then quickly apply and releases the brakes, which in turn prevent the vehicle's wheels from locking up and thus allows the driver to brake as quickly as possible while still maintaining full control of the vehicle. What are the most common types of vehicle brakes? Well, there are disc brakes, which are most commonly fitted on passenger cars. There are drum brakes, which use a shoe and a drum to create friction and are most commonly found on older passenger cars but they are now becoming more prevalent on EVs. Air brakes actuated by a pressurised air system are most commonly found on HGVs and agricultural equipment. Why or when would you need to upgrade to a big brake kit? Basically, it's a wise decision to upgrade to a big brake kit whenever you feel that you are approaching the limits of your current braking setup. Big brake kits offer vastly superior braking performance and are particularly suitable for track driving where the brakes are under much more stress than they would be under normal driving conditions. What are brake pads made of? Because we make all the brakes we sell, it stands to reason we know quite a lot about the different friction materials. EBC has its own fully qualified R&D engineers, more than 10 dynos, full chemistry and test labs with shear test, density test and hardness testing everything required to be a world-class brake pad manufacturer that boasts over 200 pad blends in its arsenal. Understanding the materials or systems that go into the brake pad is an interesting starting point. Brake pads include resins to stick the pad elements and materials together, fibres to bind the pads during manufacture, fillers to bulk out the pad, and then a collection of ingredients to enhance the pad friction levels and fade resistance. Abrasives and even lubricants are used in the design of a balance pad and their noise reduction ingredients are added to dampen vibration and therefore noise. Basically, there are five main grades of different brake pads that are sold all around the world. You have semi-metallics, organics, ceramics, NAO ceramic enhanced formulations and sintered. For more information, please head to the link in our bio. What is a hydraulic handbrake? Hydraulic handbrakes are often used in drifting and also often in rallying, rallycross and autocross in order to carry more speed through corners and to have an extra level of control over the balance of the car. A hydraulic handbrake gives you the option to control the pressure applied whilst also giving you the ability to lock up the rear wheels with ease when needed. Whereas the majority of road cars are fitted with capable operated handbrakes already, Hydraulically operated alternatives are better suited for motorsport and race use due to being plumbed directly into the braking system without the need for cables. This in turn means that the handbrake provides a more relative feel for the amount of pressure being applied, as well as being more consistent whilst eradicating the potential for stretching cables and therefore losing its capability to apply the brake, which would happen when using a more conventional handbrake setup in these situations. What is a common cause for pedal pulsation that prevents itself shortly after work on the brake has been performed? If sport rotors are not checked for runout when being fitted, driving without even applying the brakes will exhibit a clicking noise on a once per rotation on the wheel basis. If you encounter this, especially early after having the rotors installed, return them to the garage that fitted them and have them checked for runout. Recommendations for maximum permissible runout vary from 0.001 to 0.002 inches on most European cars and 0.003 to 0.006 on larger USA trucks and SUVs. These figures are not only unacceptable but they will cause brake vibration after a period of 3,000 to 4,000 miles. Mounting rotors on dirt or rust covered hubs or the excessive use of mounting creases and incorrect tightening of rotors from the first install are the most common reasons for excess runout. A common question that we receive is why do rotors suffer vibration after 3,000, 4,000 miles and how can EBC be so precise in this mileage estimate? Surely it can't be the same for every car. The reason the mileage is more or less the same for every car where vibration occurs is that the problem develops off brake or when you are driving without applying the brake. The more freeway or motorway driving that you do, 
the more easily this can occur. The excess runout mentioned previously is caused in most cases by bad fitting and not checking for runout. The other reasons for this is due to a hub not running true, such as when a car could have impacted a curb at some time. This causes the pad to kiss the rotor gently each time your wheel rotates as you drive. After the above mileage period, the pads wear a microscopic thin spot on the rotor and a condition known as DTV occurs. This DTV, otherwise known as disc thickness variation, causes the brake to pulse. A small amount of runout itself does not cause vibration, but the tiniest amount of DTV can. That is why, when a rotor is not running true, the car does not exhibit vibration in the first few miles, and this explains how it shows up later after 3,000 to 4,000 miles.